Well, welcome everyone to the Small Business Meetup. Uh, we are meeting today with Percival Sterling, owner of PQ Host Services, uh, Cyber Services. Cyber Service. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Sure. Uh, it's a Close mouthful. enough. PQ Host Cyber Services, LLC. Very excited to, to speak with Percival. And so would love to get a, um, a, a sense of the background of the company, Percival, and how you started. Sure. So if you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about it, that would be great. Okay, sure. Okay, well, I got laid off in March 2002 from a corporation downtown, and it was just such a stupid layoff. They said they were trying to save money, but it was their best year, and it was uh, just so much of a blow. I thought, you know what, I'm going to just branch out on my own so that I, if you know, I get laid off, it's me doing it. <laughs> so there were several incarnations of this business. So that first thing was a sole proprietorship that lasted until about uh, 2016. And then I created Handy Web Guy in 2016. And this year I switched it to PQO Cyber Services LLC uh, to get a more powerful name. And I'm going into cybersecurity and, uh, and other things. So to enhance the business image and stuff like that, I have sw switched the name to uh, Pico Cyber Services. So my basic philosophy is that my clients aren't an invoice, but they're real businesses, and I help to nurture and further their goals, uh, get them better presence, stuff like that. Um, I don't charge minimum time. You know, if it's 10 minutes, I don't charge an hour, stuff like that, because my goal isn't just to have my own business, but to have them thrive. And well, uh oh, I'm losing this. I'm sorry. So anyway, my philosophy also is that people needing web services shouldn't have to fear being overcharged or <clears throat> treated badly, which has happened to quite a few people that have transferred over to me where they were treated badly or just, uh, you know, they were nickel and dime to death with invoices and things like that. I like to see the big picture you know, play the long game so that they thrive as well as me. That's great. That's, that's uh, fantastic. And it sounds like you really care about your, your clients and that you build a good relationship with them, which I think is, is very important. Um, and it's also, I know from speaking with you previously, we've actually been in communication quite a lot. You've been really active in the EnviroStars program. Mm -hmm. um, and so would love to hear more about your journey with sustainability and what are the sustainable actions that you take with uh, PQ, PQ Host Cyber Services and maybe even speak about some of the challenges in your industry um, and how you're combating that. Okay, sure. I'd love to talk about that. So some of the things I do is washing out and reusing store-bought containers to use as food supply and other supply, you know, particularly butter dishes and things that are easy to wipe out, you know, so you don't use a lot of water. So you're not using more energy. Uh, so I use those uh, to store food and things like that. And, uh, and in, along those lines, I also try to create my own food rather than, you know, you go to the store and they have egg salad or whatever. I try to actually make those foods myself to go in those containers versus buying them, you know, just store bought. So I also use these large Brita Max, Brita Ultramax filters for water rather than buying bottled water. I, I make all my filtered water here, which I also put in an ice machine. Uh, some of the other things I turn off all the lights, everything that isn't essential at night in the office. Uh, one of the main things I do is that I only use our car to go back and forth from the office and to work out, uh, especially in Seattle, the traffic's so bad. And also in West Seattle, now it's all blocked off the bridge. Oh, the bridge you're in West, yeah, the bridge. West Seattle bridge. Oh gosh. So, uh, <laughs> So I try to take the bus as much as possible. So once I leave the car in the morning, if I've got to go somewhere to a house call, I do it all on, on public transit. And that helps not just with gas costs or whatever, but keeping me physically fit as well. Uh, so it has that benefit. Uh, some of the other things is I use super low energy lamps and bulbs 
instead of the fluorescent light, which I hate. Uh, and I used natural light here, so I don't turn on any of any high energy bulbs or anything like that during the day. Uh, in the winter time, I don't need to turn on the heat much because the office is kept warm by all the computers and stuff like that. So just a little bit of usage of the air conditioner when it's super hot. But other than that, I try to limit the amount of water used or wasted really and also uh, electricity as well. So I, the thing is, uh, there's a lot of natural ways that you can do uh, that you don't need to use electricity for. So especially the fluorescent lights, they use a lot here and just, it gives me a headache. So just having some natural lamps and bulbs, that really keeps the cost down. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, it sounds like you're you're doing a lot of a lot of different things, with, especially with your your office. Your because you you have a home office, is that correct? No, this is a, a leased office at Active Space. Oh, great! Here. So this is how it kind of looks here. Oh there's yeah. The, the, there's the Brita Max. I'm sorry, Brita Ultra Max, right there next to the the ice machine. And I got two of those, and these are really great because all you have to do is get a pitcher of water drop it in and you've got a gallon of bottled water, two gallons here. So, I mean, instead of, I hate bottled water so much, uh, just, you know, we lift the, the dumpster thing and it's filled with those. Oh no, the dumpster, those are recyclable. I mean, they're, or the recycling <laughs> bin, well, sometimes yeah. they do wind up here in the dumpster as well. And you know, it's just you drinking this much water and you're wasting you know, I don't know how much plastic, it's just, it's terrible. Uh, so I just make my own stuff as much as I can. I try to make my own stuff and not processed foods and things like that. When you cook for yourself, it's environmentally better. You're not getting stuff out of the freezer and microwaving it. And you know, it's all plastic contained. You, you get one of those, what is it? The uh, a TV dinner and it's just a little bit of meal and you have a plastic carton this big and it has nowhere to go but in the trash. Yeah, it's true. Well, yeah, waste reduction is is definitely a, a huge topic, I think. And so that's great. I think cooking from home, that's that's definitely something I've been doing a lot more lately and have noticed too, just that the I, I'm very fortunate to be next to a grocery store where I'm able to walk and, and get my, my produce and things like that, but it does cut down a lot on the transportation aspect as well. And I know that that's something that you are very serious about is cutting down on the transportation in your, in your work life. So, yeah. Um, I'm wondering too, in terms of just the actual sector, because in cyber security, mm -hmm. um, you're working a lot with electronics and computers and like, what are some of the environmental issues that come into play there? Probably the main thing I'd say is the data center itself, which is an energy hog. Uh, you know, I mean, it just requires so much energy amount to power a small city. So I know that some data centers have tried to go green where they don't have a cooling system they sit there in shorts and sandals uh, so i say <clears throat> that the usage of data centers and other large computer system that that just uses a tremendous amount of, of energy so you know maybe hopefully one day there'll be a way to use less but i mean they have these enormous fans and racks and stuff like that and the cords going into the the units are about you know this big they're about as big as a the machine city in the matrix. Uh, so, you know, that's the one problem that uh, you can't do much green stuff when it comes to a data center and the uh, computer equipment, it really does need to be cooled or it will literally melt down. Wow, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that. That's, that makes sense though. <laughs> the last data center I went to, they had fans that were about the size of, of the whole kitchen here just to, he just to cool down about 50 or so servers and they had 5,000 servers there. So a lot of it, heat. It generates a lot of heat and, and needs a, a lot of energy. <clears throat> so maybe if steps are taken, I mean, the, the thing where they do the green stuff helps, but helps just a little bit. 
You know, they're basically sitting in a tropical environment, but over the long term, uh, the servers could suffer damage from excessive heat. Okay. So cooling them off. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't have large ice bags in that you could put next to the machines. <laughs> yeah, too bad. You know, yeah. if it were that easy, we'd have a lot of problems solved. <laughs> we would. We just would have to make a lot of ice. That's true. There would be a water usage usage issue there. Um, pivoting to talking a little bit about the pandemic, that's something we always ask sure. guests just because it's our reality and it's been our reality for so long. Can you talk a little bit about how your business had to pivot and what were some of the opportunities and challenges associated with the pandemic? Sure. Okay. Some of the challenges was there was a great loss of revenue from my clients, some of which were completely shut down. Others were operating at five to 10% of their normal revenue. Uh, so that was very difficult. So I had some inability to plan some of the immediate steps needed uh, because of the uncertainty of it. There was some loss of hope and depression on my part uh, because of uh, we didn't know how long it was going to last and people, they were really hurting. Uh, so that was some of the, the challenges. Uh, some of the steps that I took was where I was able to physically go still on site, I went there to help them uh, make backups, keep their own morale up, things like that. I actually picked up several businesses at, in Tacoma, in the Freight House Square, which is near the Tacoma Dome. Uh, so some of the things that I did also to help them is we did payment plans and, you know, delayed payments or, or reduced payments as kind of as much as they could pay was pretty much the deal at the time. So in effect, though, I wound up helping to save quite a few businesses, which was one of my goals is that not one of my clients were going to shut down. And they almost did, but they didn't. They, they made it through. So it was very tough. And I just wanted to also be there, you know, as a support system for them, even if I couldn't help them with something, I would get on uh, social media pages and network for them. It's what I did for the Tacoma people and some others so that they, people knew they were still open, please come and do takeout and stuff like that. So I didn't just say, hey, you know what? Oops, sorry, here we go. Good luck, hope you make it. I am very proactive. I go, okay, what can we do? This really sucked. What can we do once we are done complaining about it? What can we do to help you survive? So that's what I would, I would look for ways, whatever they needed to help them survive. You know, even if I didn't always get paid for it or whatever, because again, they will survive and we'll continue to be clients. And some of the clients I've had now for almost 20 years I've been almost self-employed for almost 20 years, actually. And some of the clients have been with me since the beginning. I mean, they might be able to find something less expensive or whatever, but the the loyalty they have is uh, a result of me, you know, having the long, don't charge them or when they're down or whatever, I work with them. So that was really important. I wanted to set myself aside from the place where I'd been laid off and stuff like that. I mean, I still needed to get paid, but I found that when you're reasonable and that you still will make it and I that, but you get a really big loyalty and it's just really awe inspiring that when you are having your own challenges uh, that people write and say, wow, you, you know, just you helped me through. And that was what really made this uh, really made it successful. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there definitely seems to be a lot of heart in what you do. And I think um, for you, it, it, the message, it, what it sounds like is that if you, if you give to the community and to your clients, it'll, it'll come back around. It's a cyclical kind of thing in nature. And I really love hearing stories like that. I know the business community that we work with, there's been a lot of, there've been a lot of people. I don't think there's actually one business we've talked to who hasn't had a struggle of some sort, especially during the pandemic. And it's been so encouraging to hear these stories of, of businesses on their own time often and with their own money, you know, mm -hmm. keeping those relationships very strong and then having those clients come back and help them when they need help or other business. Right. Partners. So it's, it's a great thing that, that you've done. And 
we're all very thankful, you know, that, that you're a business that has that mindset. So it's just, it's something that we need more of. So that's, that's really awesome. Thank you. You know, and one of the things too, that I wanted to throw in is that there's been occasionally where I had to, you know, be a little more forceful about asking for a past due invoice, but generally with this approach, I don't have to, I don't have to use collections. I pretty much say, Hey, you know, what is the problem? And, and almost the entire time people will wind up getting caught up on their bills. So I don't have to use a hammer method uh, in order to get things that are past due or whatever. Like I won't cut off a client, which other large tech companies do, you know, a big box. They People have switched to me from big box companies to even pay a little bit more because they know, okay, on April 29th, if they didn't pay, I don't cut their stuff off and delete everything. I'll try to get a hold of them. Uh, and so they, they appreciate that. So I don't just slice off the service. And, you know, that's another thing because maybe they didn't get an email or whatever, and they'll switch, they've switched from another place where they didn't pay. And the day later, they erased their account and it caused a disaster. So uh, then there's really no need for that. I mean, if you can able to get a hold of your client and find out what happened, then you'll be able to uh, solve that. So, and that's a good thing because collecting past due stuff can be stressful. Definitely. Absolutely. Well, again, just, I mean, I know your, your clients probably thank you all the time, but from someone involved in the business community, it's a wonderful thing that, that you're doing and keep up that great work. I want to also ask you a little bit about um, EnviroStars again, kind of jump into the to green business recognition program that you mm -hmm. went through to get recognized as an EnviroStars green business. How has that affected your business and what was that process like for you? It actually wasn't difficult to get signed up. So uh, that's why I'm going to advise other businesses that to go ahead and get started. It was fairly easy, lengthy, but, but not that difficult to get signed up. And I'm so glad because some of the things that it's done is it reinvigorated the morale and the excitement about the business and the post-pandemic phase because it really was very dark last year. So it really boosted it up things and uh, I was like, you know, it isn't just all gloom and doom and the ability to join a new network, especially one of this significance was personally exciting. Uh, it helped show more resources that were available on the network. I brainstormed more environmental ideas and concepts as well. And uh, one of the reasons that conservation and environmentalism is so important to me personally is that I suffered great abuse into my mid twenties where I basically fled to Seattle in 1995. And part of that abuse was being deprived of things and starving. Uh, we, we actually all, all starve as a result of it. And it was a phony kind of poverty. Uh, so you know, we had to just make do with whatever we had. And so when I see a waste of food or other things, it really hurts because from my own experience of such need. And so that's is why I put so much emphasis into it that I really believe that it would make other people uh, happy. You know, once they take the steps, maybe it's a little inconvenient, but once you take the steps, it's really neat to see how much you save and you also save money as well and, and the health benefits of it. So I highly recommend for people to join the EnviroStars and I'm trying to actively get them involved in it. Yeah, I liked your interview and sign up process. You know, it just took a little bit of time, but it wasn't, you know, like brains, <laughs> you know, learning how to do brain surgery or something. It was just common sense stuff. So, you know, any business that's serious to get involved, I believe can and should. And I'm trying to do my part to help in that. 
Well, you've been absolutely wonderful about helping spread the word about the program and just, again, highlighting how active you've been in the program. Um, you know, I think I've talked to you uh, at least over email and over the phone once multiple times just, mm -hmm. just to talk you through the application. And then also you've been great about um, asking for resources, which is a huge part of the program, you know, is that I think people could definitely be doing that more. We have, um, you know, a lot of resources available and, 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 to, we, we love to talk to people to try and help them with their businesses as, as much as possible. I know that we um, had Seattle, the Seattle region had some water conservation kits and strainers and things like that that you took advantage of, which is great. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we really appreciate you just being part of that, that, um, that this community. And also thank you, you know, for, for sharing a bit about your personal experience in your past. That sounds, I want to acknowledge that that sounds really, really, really difficult. And um, I mean, you know, I, I can't even imagine. So what you had to go through, but it does sound like it gave you a really, really big mission um, in addition to what you're doing with cyber services. And so I can see where that, um, that, that mission to get rid of waste and to cut down on it really comes in. It's a very emotional thing for you. And, and I think that's a great way to drive it despite the circumstances. So appreciate you sharing about that. Sure. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book about the experience in fact called hostage crisis jailers, not parents. It's taking a long time to write because of the, the emotion and the difficulty, but I may put in about, uh, conservationism in there, I, I most likely am going to add that as well uh, because of, of the experience, you know, to uh, instead of just making lemonade out of lemons, I'm going to make a lemonade corporation out of it uh, because, you know, when bad things happen, you know, you can complain about it or whine about it, you know, I tell people, go ahead and do that. And now when you're done, let's roll up the sleeves and make good out of it. Uh, so don't just get stuck there. Uh, you know, because may, you may help other, you may save other people's lives uh, when they learn what you went through and how you were able to get past it. And not just that, but thrive. You know, the greatest way to defeat abusers is to thrive and, and make success and help other people also thrive and survive. So, you know, in that way that you are not just burdened with that, but that you have made some good of. That is a fantastic message, very uplifting, very encouraging, and something that I think we all can benefit from hearing more of. So I really appreciate that that message. Make, sure. make you know, lemon factory. I love that lemonade factory. <laughs> That's great. Lemonade factory, right? There you go. Yeah. yeah. Go on bicycles and uh... <laughs> That's awesome. First of all, um, you know, that's so we're winding down the interview here, but if people want to reach out to you at all to ask you any questions about your business or what you're doing with environmental sustainability and conservation or anything of that sort, what is the best way for them to get in contact with you? Uh, they can go to my website, pqhost.com and contact me there or call 206-773-3001. Uh, and that's my landline. And if I'm not here, leave a message. And if I, do I have a couple more minutes? I would like to talk about something that I was doing on the side. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to so, hear about that. So I had here what's next for the business. And so I have increase on cybersecurity, knowledge-based stuff. But what I really wanted to mention was that I have a, an organization called No Biz Like Your Own that I'm redeveloping and recreating, but I'm also creating a side organization called No Green Like Your Own. And so it's going to help businesses, you know, one of the things will be to, to network and get people signed up with EnviroStars and related organizations, but some of the things will be uh, resources and, and simple ways to uh, be environmentally sound and conservationist. Like I have such some catchphrases, your ocean will love you, make your dumpster very lonely, putting your local landfill on a diet, let it go to waste. And that's W-A-I-S-T uh, because I 53 and I have a 34 inch waistline. A few years ago, I beat diabetes uh, in 2013. That's another story. Congratulations. But thank you. But I'm athletic 
now I can pretty much just about eat anything I want at 53 years old. So one of the biggest factors is that there's a huge health benefit to environmentalism. Uh, another concept I had is don't bottle it up, <laughs> refill it instead. When in doubt, turn it out or rather turn it off. So <laughs> it didn't quite rhyme, but, and then, you know, taking the bus can be a plus. So I would have little catchphrases like that, simple little things that people can do to integrate into their life that won't be major lifestyle changes, but will still, you know, have environmental impact. Any impact is, is great. And, you know, without the disruption of it or being extremely annoying or whatever, you know, like I told you, well, you know, try to bag your lunch, you know, instead of driving or, you know, even or go to a restaurant close by. But, you know, here during the rush hour in Seattle, you have a rush hour at lunch because people are leaving to go for lunch. You know, they drive miles away. So that's one of the things is trying to eliminate how much driving maybe you can do during the middle of the day and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to be creating that as well and offering that and, and it'll have a lot of links and uh, sign up for EnviroStars so that people go, oh, wow, you know what? I really can do this. But because what I found with people is that they don't mind the change if they don't think that it's going to be super complex to or, or really interfere with their lifestyle. They're willing to do it. You know, if it's too complex or that's what I tell people, if you build apps, or things for people on the computer. Don't make it complex. It's always better if it's just simple. Have one or two buttons. Don't have a massive control panel. And this is the same thing with this. You know, simple, small things that people can do. Uh, and I'm going to tell them this is how you can really enhance your life. You're going to be happy that you did this. And, you know, I'm like, do we need to have an ocean with 5 million? bottles floating in the middle of it you know then that's the thing this garbage has to go somewhere you know when uh, go to the the health club people buy the bottled water but they have fruit infused water he says thank you come and fill up all your all of your uh your what you call it you know like this your water bottle like i keep this water bottle with me oh everywhere. yeah and so I fill it up there. And she says, you know, most people buy the bottled water, but they have fruit, a, a huge, uh, like my fountain filled with ice and fruit. And people still opt to go with the bottled water, even though it's just, I mean, and they're paying $1, $2, and they go outside to look at the dumpster and the lid is, is rattling from all these things. It's just, it's really ridiculous, I think. I don't understand that. So educating people, on how easy that is to change that, I think it will be really great. I mean, and you figure everybody, if they eliminate five, 10 bottles and you multiply that by the number of people, you have really made a large impact. Absolutely. Wow, that is all such cool stuff. I'm so glad that you jumped in. I, I did jump that that question, I realized. I'm so glad you, you brought up what's happening next with because there's so much going on that you're working on and that's so exciting. And I love those catchphrases, by the way. I think they're they're so witty. <laughs> People really take to, to those little phrases, I think, rather than, you know, stressing about how can they do their part. It's like, oh, wow, my... I, you know, fall in love with your ocean and stuff like that. And it gets people thinking, yeah, when I do this, it isn't just getting tossed somewhere. Where is it going to wind up in five, 10, 15 days? You know, like the, a lot of masks that have been disposed. I heard of they're winding up in landfills. Animals are eating them and stuff like that. And so this stuff has a real impact, not just on us, but on animals and our planet, you know, and even if, for people that may not believe in climate change or it's not a big deal or whatever. But what I tell them is, even if that wasn't true, we can do better. We must do better. You know, we don't ha have to leave our planet, you know, a, a mess of plastic bottles and, and, you know, used TV dinner trays. So even if you don't believe it's heating up or whatever, you can still do your part 
And, you know, it will be better for all of us. It'll look nicer. You know, I go downtown in Seattle and some bus stops, they're filled with, with mounds of trash and they smell, it becomes, you know, unhygienic, it's dangerous. And uh, so, you know, if people are mindful of where that stuff is going and the part they can do to eliminate that, I believe that we'll have a better city, a better country and a better world. I love that. What a great message. It really encompasses two major concepts, I think, with sustainability and just being, you know, a, a solid human being and that's consciousness and conscientiousness. So that's, those are really great principles. I'm so glad you brought that up. First of all, so awesome to speak with you today, hear about your company and just hear about the amazing things that you're working on and thinking about uh, great, you know, good, good luck with your book. Very excited to, to hear more about that once that's out. And then also all of the projects you've been working on. And thank you ultimately for being such a EnviroStars champion and for always being there to cheer us on <laughs> as, as we cheer you on. <laughs> it's a terrific organization. Thank you for letting me be a part of it and for everything you do. You know, it's a lot of work, but uh, it's really going to be worth it. It really is very important. So I appreciate being part of this very much. Oh, of course. Well, it's businesses, you know, like you that, that make the program. So oh. uh, I should be thanking you all. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, before we devolve into just thanking each other constantly, um, yeah, I'll just uh, say thanks again. And then um, we do, we'll be able to share this out on um, our socials and hopefully people will get to tune in and, and hear more about what you've been doing and then contact you if they, if they uh, need to reach out at all. So thanks again. All right, you bet. My pleasure. All right.